Visit our fabulous sponsor, Ka Gold Jewelry, link in the description below. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of March 17, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. It is a very busy astrological week with a rare, powerful, transformative alignment taking place right in the middle. You add to this a full moon that isn't just about what's happening right now, but fits into a larger and rare context that will take a full 28 and a half days to fulfill and an active Mercury and an active Venus. Well, there is so much to talk about here. And I'm going to start with the power. And the power is Mars and Pluto. These two planets will speak in supreme harmony right in the middle of the week, right around Wednesday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. This is a rare alignment. Uh, it tends to happen twice in any two year period or so. And when it happens, it is a time when we are able to understand ourselves, understand what it means to direct our will and have it actually lead to transformed circumstances in our lives. Make no mistake, this is the kind of conversation that can change the course that you are walking on in a way that ultimately feels like it has benefited you, like you have leaped your life forward in a way that feels truly empowering. It is Mars right now that is moving through the sign of Taurus and will right until the end of the month. This is asking us to pay special focus on particular areas, at least as a collective. Uh, banking can be covered here as well as money. Agriculture can be covered here as well. Sometimes textiles, and this has to do ultimately, when I think of the sign of Taurus, it has to do with enjoying the earthly experience, enjoying our senses. Well, it is Mars that is a very embodied energy. It's one that knows itself and knows its power and is willing to act and exert itself from that place. And then you add Pluto speaking in supreme harmony and it adds a measure of intensity to our actions pluto of course is continuing to slowly but surely move through the sign of capricorn which has to do with success it has to do with power and ambition so you put these two together and it does look like all of us in one way or another are going to be thinking about what is it that is worth achieving what is it that we consider success and where is it that we are ready to put our resources towards what it is that we desire to experience this has to do with considering the larger picture considering the end game and also evaluating what it means to be truly powerful and how is it that that is expressed in your life how do you define prosperity and what is that unique definition for you and what is it that you are willing to truly focus on in order to move you towards your definition of prosperity so in some way all of us are making power moves at this time both part of that equation the move part and the power part are covered here and it is ultimately about helping us to truly be ourselves more honestly and in a way that truly taps into something essential allows us to express our unique vitality in a way that helps us to feel truly what i like to call self-possessed which means that we own who we are we own our power we own ourselves more fully and we're willing to make changes in order to get to that place where we're able to live that truth that much more fully and that much more often at that now Mars is gonna be activated in other ways this week, which tells me this Mars and Taurus archetypal energy is gonna be that much more important. First at the start of the week, it is gonna be Mercury speaking in harmony with Mars. And then later in the week, right around Thursday, it is gonna be Venus speaking in a conversation of tension with Mars. Now the thing is, I actually think that conversation between Venus and Mars is the most important. Yes, the Mars-Pluto energy, that is so harmonious, it has so much potential. 
and it really gets a lot of attention when it does come around. But it is ultimately what type of conversation that Mars and Venus are having that actually is going to count for something in the bigger picture. That's because what is happening with Mars and Pluto is what astrologers call a trine. It is very easy energy and it can sometimes make us lazy. Now, the good thing is Mars and Pluto both are not necessarily lazy or laid back energies, but it is that connection with Venus that asks us to consider a few things. Venus, of course, right now is moving through the sign of Aquarius and Venus in Aquarius wants to be true to itself. It cares about being authentic, about expressing something unique, about trusting itself. And Venus is an energy of prosperity, an energy of pleasure, an energy of trusting that good things can find us. Well, when we have the archetypal energy of Mars that says, know yourself and go after what you want, speaking with the energy of Venus, which says you alone are enough, just be yourself and it'll show up for you. In this type of conversation that astrologers call a square, you're not laying back, you are going to take action. And it is that action that ultimately will ensure that the potential of Mars and Pluto count for something. Now, Mercury is still retrograde. Speaking with Mars, that is a powerful indication that it is going to be some opportunity that feels like it's come back around, some insight, some message that came once, but now is here again. That is part of what helps us to understand our power, to tap into our power, and inspires us to actually take action. It is Mercury moving through the sign of Pisces that is asking us to see and perceive with faith in our heart. With that Mercury retrograde, we are asked to have another look and a deeper look. Speaking with Mars in a very practical, grounded and present energy like Taurus, well, it becomes this bridging of what is otherwise a feeling, an intuition, an inspiration, and actually ensuring that it motivates us to move forward, however diligently, however methodically, towards manifesting a future that matters to us. Now that future is further emphasized by the fact that in the middle of the week, Mercury will also speak in harmony with Saturn. And Saturn is all about the big picture. Saturn also moving through the sign of Capricorn, which happens to be its home sign, which means that it is in an especially powerful place now. And this is gonna allow us to understand what sacrifices are worth working towards and what it is that our big picture, the legacy that we are creating, well, what is happening right now in some way is contributing to that legacy. This uh, connection between Mercury and Saturn is important for another reason. It is a part of an ongoing conversation that is part of defining this Mercury retrograde season. And it is one of these respite moments. If you think back over the last few weeks, I've been talking a lot about Neptune, right? There's been a lot of energy there that has been kind of confusing, uh, kind of ephemeral, hard to pin down. Uh, an energy that has us dreaming wonderful things, but not necessarily knowing how it is that we're gonna ground what otherwise would just be a, a belief that miracles can happen. Well, how do we actually live those miracles? It is Saturn that is ultimately ensuring that the dreams and the visions and the hopes of Mercury moving through the sign of Pisces, that it actually allows us to manifest a more inspired future. It ensures that what otherwise could be a fantasy actually becomes reality. Well, this is one of those reality moments where with a little bit of attention and a little bit of work, we are actually able to start experiencing that sense of taking idea and creative insight and actually having it move us forward. So there's a lot of action in a lot of these different celestial conversations that are taking place this week. And it does say that it's gonna be very hard for a lot of us to stay still. 
even with Mercury retrograde. And normally when Mercury's retrograde, it is advised not to do new things, uh, not to take any huge consequential actions. But when we have a sky like this, the temptation, the drive, the motivation is there to in some way take steps to move ourselves forward and to take new and bold actions that are gonna move us in the direction that we feel we are meant to go. Because Mercury is retrograde, what we believe we are meant to do, what we want, how we're understanding our environment may change once Mercury goes direct very soon. However, at least for right now, if we are connecting to ourselves and understanding who we really are and acting from that place, really we cannot go wrong. And it is this connection between Mars and Pluto that to me is all about knocking it out of the park. Now going back to Venus, there are a couple of things that are worth noting. Venus is the ruling planet of Taurus. So there's a natural connection between the sign of Taurus and Venus. And Venus speaking with Mars in the sign of Taurus it's almost like there is not necessarily that these energies are at odds with each other they are considered cosmic lovers and anytime these two planets speak it tends to denote a rise in passion and desire and flirtation regardless of the type of conversation that is playing out however because it is taurian energy right that is being highlighted here so strongly by both of these planets because of their placements or because of their very nature. It does suggest that those very lessons of self-esteem and self-value and prosperity and understanding what's worth doing, what isn't worth doing, understanding possessions and what they represent and understanding our senses and our connection to the earth, well, that becomes that much more important at this time. And it may not feel like that understanding is so organic. It may not feel like that understanding is flowing as easily because at the end of the day, Venus moving through the sign of Aquarius, Aquarius is a very different energy than Taurus. Whereas Taurus is all about the earthly experience. It is Aquarius that is all about uh, the future and all about the thoughts and all about the mind level experience. Um, it is Taurus that is a very embodied energy. There's a strong physicality to it, but it is the sign of Aquarius that is almost above our physicality, above our bodies, and instead is much more interested in ideas and innovations and contemplating the future than it is in truly being present in this moment right now. And so these two energies are gonna be asked to reconcile themselves with each other. How can we bring forward a truly visionary spirit, but at the same time stay connected to the earth? Well, in some way, in at least a couple of different areas of life, we are going to have to find that space. We're gonna to have to find a way for these two energies to harmoniously coincide and especially as a collective. What is the practical needs of the moment? Where are we right now? And what is a more visionary sense of where is it that we could go? And is our heart truly there? If all our energy is going into this moment and what is right now and addressing it, can we still tap into that sense of what a more idealistic future could be for us and for humanity? And where is it that we can bring love to that journey? This will be part of our collective contemplation at this time. Now, another important conversation that Venus is going to have this week is one of harmony with Jupiter. And this is just a really nice energy. It's an energy of enjoyment. Uh, it's an energy of expansion, uh, an energy of optimism. And this can be truly lovely, the way that these energies can work together at this time. With Venus moving through the sign of Aquarius, our love choices and interests uh, can be a little bit different than we are used to otherwise, uh, and they can be rather rebellious. Well, you add this energy of Jupiter moving through its home sign of Sagittarius, and it really is that our heart is open to the world. 
and our heart is open to connecting with very different types of people than we have known before. Now it is of course a sign of Aquarius that isn't necessarily a romantic or personal energy. It's much more interested in the collective. It's interested in things like humanity. And then we have Jupiter in the sign of Sagittarius and very interested in truth. I feel like this is going to be a truly healing energy that we need right now uh, given current events and what is taking place to help us to feel that the world is a little bit smaller to help us to feel our sense of inherent connection to each other and to help us to understand ourselves as unified uh, right here and to bring love to that understanding. Jupiter in Sagittarius can be very philosophical, but it is also Jupiter that is an energy of healing. And I feel like with this connection to Venus, this is gonna be just what it is that we need right now to bring a sense of healing to the collective and to help us to tap into a more philosophical search for truth and a more philosophical understanding, not only of what has been, but where it is by tapping into a more visionary perspective that we could go together. Now, if all of that wasn't enough, it is a full moon week. Right around Thursday, we have a full moon in Libra. This is special for a few reasons. Well, first of all, the Venusian connection. Again, Venus being highlighted, making Venus truly one of the most important power players in the sky this week because Venus is also the ruling planet of Libra as well. In addition to being the ruling planet of Taurus, the ancients uh, said that Venus was the ruler of Taurus in its day aspect and Venus was the ruler of Libra in its night aspect. And I've spoken before about this understanding of earthly Aphrodite and celestial Aphrodite. Well, it is ultimately Venus that is the modern day and the physical expression, the planetary expression of the mythological Aphrodite, goddess of love. And so whereas Venus in her day expresses herself in terms of enjoying the earthly incarnation and being present, it is Venus in its night that is more interested in higher forms of beauty as it has been called, the beauty of ideas and forms and graces as we interact with other people, the beauty of thoughts and understandings and articulations. And so with this full moon in Libra, it does bring into focus these matters. But this full moon is interesting, not only because of what is happening now, but what will happen 28 and a half days later, which is another full moon in the same sign. And it is rare to have two full moons back to back in the same sign taking place. Normally you get one full moon per sign per year. But it is this year that we're getting these two full moons in Libra. This full moon that happens this week is going to happen at the very beginning of the sign of Libra. It is going to be the next full moon next month that will happen at the very end of its sign, which tells me that at least for now, the full moon is going to represent things that full moons do represent, like culmination, fruition, um, a sense of completion, sense of reward, reaping what it is that we've been working on or what we have sown, um, and a sense of clarity as well, an emotional clarity in particular. But with it will come an inherent beginning. Along with that sense of closure will come excitement for what is beginning as well. But it is gonna be next month's full moon happening at the very end of its sign that is going to be the true sense of closure that is gonna transpire for us. And that is going to be even more emotional than the full moon that we are having right now. And so chances are what we feel excited about, what it is that is beginning is a wonderful thing, but what begins now in some way will put us on a path where we truly understand where it is that closures are ready to take place once we get into next month. By then, Mercury will have left shadow as well. The whole Mercury retrograde season will be good and over. And so this does suggest that at least by the time we get there, we will truly be ready for more consequential choices and won't feel as much like we have to go back over old ground, which is what Mercury retrograde season tends to be about. 
What I love about this week for us is that there really is so much going on. There is something for everyone to benefit from. There is something that just about any sign can tap into and use to their advantage, use to strengthen their pathway forward. And there are also real opportunities here to create meaningful transformations in your life. But through it all, remember the dominant energy this week is of Venus. It is asking us to love and to understand love more deeply. And this is something that, you know, it has been said again and again, and it is uh, something that we are reminded of again and again. I think it's part of the world that we have created. It's a part of what it means to be human or our definition of human that we have collectively created, which is we're going to go through times when we are faced with the lessons of embracing love and understanding the consequences of not doing that. And we are in one of those moments now. And the fact that Venus is so active, letting us know that she is here and asking us to think of love in new ways, in enlightened ways, in elevated ways. Well, this ultimately is going to bring the healing that we need now in our individual lives and in the collective. Wherever you are, in your life right now, my hope is that for you and for all of us, that we will consider where it is that we can bring love and ultimately with the intention of bringing love to more people in more ways and in new ways, we ultimately can help strengthen the energy of love over the entire planet. And that love grows more and more and becomes strengthened with the wisdom that we share. Well, thank you so much for watching. What are you excited about this week and how are you doing with all the stuff that's been happening and all the emotions that have been flowing and really all the emotions that likely are also going to be there now given uh, the full moon energy, given the energy that is asking us to find balance. Um, how are you doing with it? I would love to read about it. Let me know in the comments below. I'm a little tempted to say something, and I'm just gonna say it once. I never really comment on this stuff at all, but I'm just gonna say this. It's just hair, okay? <laughs> it's just hair. Okay, now if you'd like to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded, exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I've been having a lot of fun, a very rewarding time with my Synchronicity University students. Thank you to each and every one of you. I love you guys so much. Thank you for an amazing uh, class that we had earlier today. And we have just one more class to go as part of this session. Now I have been talking to you guys about this and I've been uh, saying to you in the year ahead overview, this year and next year are incredibly powerful. They are years that are going to raise our vulnerability. They are years that are going to ask us to consider the next world that we want to create. And it is this year that sets the stage for what is next that is coming up at the beginning of 2020. So we truly are in the midst of very powerful times. And as part of this, I do believe that more of us than ever are wanting to understand love and joy and wisdom and hope and moving towards transformation in truly visceral and immediate and meaningful ways. And so as part of this, there's a lot of things that I am going to be doing this year and next year to help ensure that at least we are doing our part so that the next phase of humanity that is set to begin in 2020 with the meeting of Saturn and Pluto, which is really going to change the way that we understand power and who has the power. How are we going to navigate these powerful times of change and ensure that power is brought to love and that we understand that love is the greatest power that there is? Well, I want to be part of affirming that and creating that world because the world that we've been creating over the last 500 years has brought us to where we are today and we are now ready for that shift. We are ready for that change. 
It is 2019 that is getting us ready and 2020 will be the iconic moments that will begin that new phase that will carry us forward for the next centuries. So whatever part of it I can be, whatever part of it we can be, I think that's amazing. But also I know that this is something that is a deeply personal journey. And it is now that a lot of people are willing and open and understanding the need for healing more than ever. And it is with that intention that I will be offering all kinds of things again this year and next. So as part of that, the most recent session of Synchronicity University, uh, three classes have already taken place. You can download them now. The class earlier today was on changing bonds, transforming difficult relationships. We also did a class on understanding and defining your higher power for yourself. And we had another class that had to do with moments that bring profound transformations. So all of those classes are ready for download now on my website, nadiashaw.com or at synchronicityuniversity.com. Next week's class is going to be the final of this current session. And it is going to be on forgiveness because I do think that forgiveness is one of the defining characteristics of love. And forgiveness is the cornerstone of any truly spiritual path. You cannot walk a spiritual path unless you are open to where it is that forgiveness needs to happen towards yourself or towards others. We cannot know love unless we are willing to know what it means to reach that point where we have to forgive ourselves or others. So there is a very rich philosophical and mystical tradition around these matters. We've been talking a lot in each class about uh, Carl Jung and Jungian ideas and Freudian ideas. And so we will continue to explore that and continue that theme next week so if you can join us live you would be very welcome we create a safe space together whether you can join us in person whether you catch us on the download uh, you would be very welcome to participate in that and um, thank you thank you to all the students who do trust me who continue to trust me um, as part of ultimately what i believe is my mission which is to affirm love and wisdom in the world in a time like this you really feel um, how important that is. And I will be doing live events as well that in some way will be a part of affirming this mission as well, affirming love and wisdom in the world. I have live events coming up in May in Vancouver and in Seattle and over Labor Day weekend in Baltimore. And of course, I have a whole uh, cruise experience that is centered around love, joy, and hope. And it is going to take place under the light of the Pluto-Saturn conjunction that defines this next phase for us. And it is um, going to be an experience that ultimately I hope will transform people's lives for the rest of their life. And so you can learn a lot more about that on my website as well. Um, thank you so much to everyone who has registered. I appreciate each and every one of you. I know that whoever does come, it's like we are karmically aligned or we're being called to this moment. And I know that the people who have registered so far, a lot of them have said, it just feels right. It feels like what I'm meant to do. There are a lot of teachers who are gonna be there as well. Um, I have been asked to let you know uh, that the room rate that we have had is the early bird rate, and that is uh, about to be completely filled. And so the actual cabin price is gonna go up. I don't know how much, but we're trying to figure that out or negotiate, or at least Patricia Bell, who has been uh, taking the lead on this, has been trying to figure out how it is that we can ensure that cabin prices remain as low as possible. They have been only 774 per person for the entire week cruise, which is a very low price for a cruise. Um, regardless of where you are in terms of the resources available to you, my hope is that you don't limit your vision. And if it feels like this is something that you are meant to do, if you feel karmically aligned with this event or with any of the other events that I'm doing now, that I've announced already or that I will be announcing, um, 
know that what it is that you are meant to do has a way of coming together. And my life has shown this to me again and again. And so check it out. And if it is that it is for you, uh, I look forward to meeting you on board. And finally, I don't want to forget my amazing sponsor. Thank you so much to Ka Gold Jewelry for sponsoring this video. They make amazing sacred jewelry, talismans, amulets, uh, including astrology jewelry as well, created at precise astrologically aligned times to hold the magic of the moment. You can learn a lot more about them and just look at the amazing pictures of their very beautiful jewelry by logging on to their website and you can check out the link in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you and uh, thank you so much for in some way being here to affirm love and wisdom in the world and for seeing what I do as some small part of your sacred journey. I'm truly so grateful for it. Thank you again. Until we connect again, take care and it'll be a great week. Enjoy.